Uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, this evening. We are gathered here, uh, all of us, in the uh, august presence of the Lord, and may his name be glorified uh, this evening. We are glad to receive all of you uh, from the different uh, nations and cities and communities. Uh, representing also and coming from different domains that God has raised you up for. Um, we thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, no one came to God thirsty and hungry and went back empty-handed. Um, so we know what is happening and we know what uh, is coming forth uh, in our midst and ahead of the years. Um, what we are doing is just like how uh, it's summarized in, uh, it is summarized in the place uh, of Hebrews chapter 11, verse seven. There is a summary there which summarizes uh, the faith of Noah and the custodianship of Noah the manner with which and in which he executed custodianship uh, before God, custodianship for the destiny of nations. Uh, I like how it is put there, very simple but profound. It is put out there to say, by faith or through faith, Noah being warned of God concerning things uh, that were to come, uh, the floods that were to come, he moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household. And uh, through that uh, obedience, he condemned the worldly ones. He condemned the world. He brought condemnation of the world. God used the obedience of Noah to use it as the plumb line, as the measuring stick. Um, to measure the righteousness of everybody else in the whole generation. But uh, Noah, when he was preparing for uh, building the blueprint that God had given him, uh, there was no fanfare, there was no um, major visibilities of major things. It was like business as usual. And for Noah, and in the case of Noah, this thing took very long and almost too long, 120 years, Noah preaching righteousness. But uh, the long suffering of the Lord, the apparent delays or slowdowns of the Lord uh, was not meaning slackening. It was not meaning shortness on the part of God. It was simply meaning that God is merciful and God is long suffering um, and because he does not desire anyone to perish, but he desires that people may come to the knowledge of God, come back to their senses and repent and be redeemed. But then when they were given enough time and more than enough time and no response, the day came whereby the judgment seat uh, was established and God had to past judgment, but he then had to use the righteous Noah as the uh, standard to say those who uh, are going to try to defend themselves against this uh, judgment, uh, I don't have to bring angels here. I don't have to bring uh, you know, the, 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 the son of God here. I, I'll just bring Noah, who is of like passions like you, one of you. Did you not see the conviction and the agency with which he moved and did preparation? This reminds me, brethren, as long ago as 
January 2015, uh, I started to speak to people. I started to say, God is giving us, and he has given us five years. And these five years are five years of maximum grace. Let us build, let us prepare a system, let us prepare a blueprint and platforms that are going to rescue uh, people to cross over into the next dispensation, which is going to be dominated by the kingdom of God being the most dominant thing. And this is exactly where we are going. And so the five years, if you count 2015, 16, 17, 18, 2019, December, uh, all hell broke loose in the world. And uh, by January, China was in lockdowns, the February, you know, this thing, when it started, it was like a Chinese thing. Well, former president uh, of the USA, Donald Trump used to call it the Chinese virus uh, because it was thought to be just somewhere confined there. But soon and very soon, the whole earth was down and out. Uh, but thanks be to God that he had already, in our case, he had already provided a, a blueprint. The foundations had been there. We had launched, we had scaled up the work of uh, KIAM, Kingdom International Apostolic Mandate, over the nations. The networks and relationships that God had given us with the, the body of Christ, the marketplaces, and uh, the Josephs and the Daniels and many others, the intercessors, prayer networks all over the world. This then in 2016 November had been consolidated now into the launching of the World Economic Congress and right exactly on time, God was on time. He did not delay, he did not prolong exactly on time. He started to close down and to shut down everything that was. If we are in the year 2022, which is the third year of COVID, the orientation that is correct, the orientation that is accurate is for us to actually realize that we are only coming out in order now to build in place God's system. The whole uh, jargon and uh, uh, you know, utterances to say we must simply build back better. It is not correct and it is not enough and it is not the solution because the concept of building back better, it simply means let's go back and build back. Uh, if we were thieves, if we were corrupt, if we were immoral, let's just go back. If we were wizards, if we were sorcerers, if we were idolaters, let's go back to idolatry and build back idolatry in a better way. Let's try to be cleverer than God. Let's try to outwit God. There is no implication. There is no reference to repentance. But what God is speaking about is a reconstruction. If my people that are called by my name uh, shall humble themselves, the prescription is there, the blueprint is there, shall humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. That's why in the 70 days that is before us, we are identifying areas of repentance and turning from wicked ways, areas of wickedness. We will be bringing on this platform uh, in the weeks that are coming. We'll be bringing into this platform expositions and exposures and awarenesses of things that are wicked, that had gripped and captured uh, not just the nations, not just the, 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 the businesses and economy and finance and media and health and, 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 and medicine and uh, pharmaceuticals, not just those things, but these things had done that audacity even to capture the best of the vessels, the golden vessels and treasures of the Lord's house almost like Nebuchadnezzar style in Jerusalem, whereby the best of the treasures from the Lord's house were captured and taken to Babylon and then positioned and deployed to serve the gods of Babylon. So we had reached that kind of a point. And so this is why 70 days is not even enough. It's a very short period. 
because we have to thoroughly expose as well as dismantle, as well as remove, as well as relocate ourselves completely into a new system of God. It's not new uh, to God. It's only new to us because we had been logged down in those systems. In fact, we were stuck in those systems. And uh, what we began to see by the onset of COVID up until recently, this is just an amplification. It's a magnification of what was already existing. The, 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 the producers and manufacturers and distributors of COVID were already existing. They didn't start existing you know, in, in the year 2020, in January. They were not born in January 2020. They were already amongst us. They were already doing wickedly. But what was now remaining and which is now needed, according to Daniel 11, verse 32, what is now needed is that while it's the wicked are doing wickedly and using flattery and not speaking the truth, while it's all that is prevailing, we then have to do this thing which all creation is groaning and waiting for, which is now the manifestation of the sons of God, which is now what is spoken in, in, in Daniel 11, verse 32, whereby those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So this is the push. This is the seed that God is sowing and planting. He is sowing and planting the seed of strength. Gone are the days whereby we just get by with you know, church just being in a queue of many religions. That does not help this world. This world is in a crisis. This world is in a state of chaotic confusion. The Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Guterres, he was out there in Moscow. He was out there in Ukraine. He saw the chaos. He saw the chaos. The, 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 the spokesperson of the, the, the White House in the United States was weeping and shedding tears uh, 24 hours ago just by seeing the chaos which the U.S. government has no solutions for. This chaos cannot be underestimated. This chaos calls for fathers and bridegrooms to come out of their bedchambers and to come and weep before God and stand before God. This is not time for business as usual. This is time which now the destiny of nations is at stake. And this is why as we have started to gather and as we pray, visions and dreams have been seen of you know, a representation of nations represented by a hopeless you know, you know, young person sitting there on crossroads and stuck there and not knowing which way to take. But sooner, the moment we started to release the word and to pray, this young desperate person, homeless person, began to be resurrected and deployed and, 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 and activated to, to go in a decisive direction. So nations are in need of decisiveness right now. Churches are in need of decisiveness right now. This is no more time to go back and continue with the pre-COVID experimentation, and then we try to build back better. And, and it's no more time for, for that Ask the school children, the school going, you know, ages of children, they'll tell you how frustrated they are. Some of them have become stuck and drowned in drugs because two years have been wasted of their life. This is now the third year. They cannot swallow another third year without direction. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. We cannot continue in a state of indecision and confusion and suspense with the children perishing, resorting to drugs and the substance abuse because there is no vision. The nations have no vision, even the model by which we have been raising kids and the children. It has been inaccurate because we outsourced and mortgaged the children to school teachers 
out there whom we don't know where they were trained. We don't know what they believe. We don't know what they love and what they don't love. We don't know what they worship. We outsource the kids. We outsource the children. And now it was like child dumping in the schools. Now parents become stuck when they were now thrust, thrust with responsibility in the two years of lockdowns. Parents, now you have to teach those children. You have to implement Deuteronomy chapter six now, which commanded Israel to say, you shall teach your children these words of wisdom, these words of this law. You shall put them to be your frontlets, on your frontlets and on your doorpost and on your door lintels when, when you work in the field. Parents became stuck. They became grounded. They did not know what to do with kids because parents had been hijacked and removed from child development, uh, you know, assignment and mandate. And so when the schools, uh, you know, the schools, the school system, which we have uh, sold the children to the schools that we don't know whether they are going to be open, whether they are going to be successful, whether they're going to be existing forever. When those things were all shut down, there was such confusion. There was such confusion amongst the families, confusion amongst parents. So this is time, brethren. This is the reason why God is summoning us so that we would come back and now repent before God. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, because when I shut up the heavens that there be no rain and I, I send locusts to devour the land and the pestilence are, are, are amongst my people. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face and seek my ways and pray, I the Lord will hear in heaven and forgive their sin and heal the land. We cannot build accurately without understanding and acknowledging and repenting from the sins and the transgressions, trespasses and iniquities that were pursuing us and we were stuck and we were entrenched in these things. We cannot just, just continue to go back and open the doors of those businesses, but there is no repentance even if it's not about you, Daniel had to repent about the, the transgressions and sins of every layer and every strata and every structure of the whole of Israel because nations need custodians. Nations cannot prosper. They cannot arrive. They cannot reach the destination except there be custodians that will put their lines and lives and necks on the block to say, yes, come Lord, and here we are and descend us. So this is why brethren, the 72 days, it's not very long. It's actually too short. In fact, I feel like we are running short of time already, whilst we are at the beginnings of the second week of the 10 weeks in a row. I already feel like we don't have enough time to cover these things because it's a whole, remember, we are coming from you know, centuries and centuries of people getting lost and we must try to lay the foundations of fixing these things in a marathon 70 days. So this is why you find 40 years, I mean, others were given 40 years and the 40 years, you know, sometimes were not even enough for some of them. Because even after crossing the, the Jordan River, after you know, possessing the first city, uh, the, the city of Jericho, in order to transform it, in order to raise the system of God in Jericho, amongst the Israelites in the tribe of Judah, there was already another one who was going back to the same old system of greed and that old system of avarice and that old system of unbridled corruption and he had to be destroyed in order for people to go forward. He had missed the curriculum in 40 years. In 40 years, he missed it. In 40 years, his spirit was not impacted. May God set us free from that hardness of heart from that stiff-neckedness, may God permit us in these 70 days to truly stand before God and come out 
come out with grace and come out with graciousness and thankfulness and come out with gratitude and come out with with righteousness with the shalom of god and the joy of god in the holy spirit may god not permit any one of us to come out in this, with miscarriage so allow me in a few moments to just put two uh, particular pillars of the template of custodianship of nations. I just want to keep on and carry on from the model of Daniel uh, part six tonight. And we still are moving on. Tomorrow. May God help us, uh, the, you know, as we move forward with these issues. Allow me to just uh, move on right now. And, and, and uh, then we will move straight away from this scripture and will turn it over to prayer because we must now repent and appear before God with repentance. We read a model from Moses whereby Moses, when he came down from the mountain, he found them, yes, dancing to idols, dancing to molten calves, and he had to, with anger, and out of anger, he broke the tablets of stone. He broke the law, the blueprints and handwritings of God, and he had to go back for another 40 days again to lie prostrate before God, 40 days and 40 nights, until God rewrote with his own finger the blueprints on new tablets, and until Moses would come down with the authentic and accurate blueprints because they could not reconstruct, they could not move on with, with, with illegitimate and fake and false blueprints. This is my cry about today's body of Christ. This is my cry about today's governments. This is my cry about today's businesses and marketplaces across the board. This is my cry about today's young people and old people. We can't just wipe off the loot from our lips and then we continue business as usual. We cannot proceed without the authentic handwriting of God on the tablets of stone. This is critical and this handwriting of God has to be presented and ministered to governments and to businesses and to all domains and to our children. We have got to turn and say, we were wrong. We repent. We are your, we, we are your parents. We are the ones that must raise you up. We must are the ones that must primarily show you the way. School teachers are just supplementary uh, you know, crafts, crafts people, craftsmen and crafts women who specialize in particular subjects, but the responsibility, the custodianship is over the parents to make sure that the future is provided for. Employment does not get provided primarily by the school teacher or by the, you know, strange and anonymous and unknown employer somewhere there in the by and by. These things of raising crafts and careers and guiding and empowering and capacitating these young people, it is the responsibility exactly of the custodians of households in the family level. And may God help us. And then soon and very soon, we will be having no more unemployment. Every man will sit under his fig tree and everyone under his vine. And nobody will make them afraid. The Bible tells us in Daniel, in chapter 2, verse, uh, we, you know, uh, reading there on verse 49, it tells us to say, the king, the king of Babylon, the king of Babylon, you see, Daniel petitioned the king, the king of Babylon. Oh my God, tonight let me reveal to you that every king can hear the voice of God, no matter how drunk the king is, no matter how drunk the king is, no matter how pagan the king is. When God, who made and who formed that king, when he speaks, the king will hear. We just need to open the heavens that the voice of God may come down upon kings uh, and that the works of God and that the blueprints of God may come down before kings.
kings. Daniel petitioned this gentle king, this king who wanted to do a genocide uh, two hours ago, this king who wanted to kill and to destroy uh, and, to, and, and to overthrow everybody. Immediately, Daniel petitioned this king by the voice of the Lord. And Daniel said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Now, this was as a result of a petition. This was as a result of counsel. Daniel counseled, he petitioned with counsel. He advised the king, oh my God, tonight we have got to pray that every king, including whether that king is a Nebuchadnezzar, whether that ruler is a Cyrus, whether that ruler is a David, that does not matter. It's none of our business. We are going to pray tonight that the, the Daniel breakthrough, the Daniel spirit is going to arise in the people of God. And they are going to bring petitions. They are going to bring counsel to rulers, to leaders, to public officials, whether in whatsoever domain, we don't care. We are going to pray. I don't care it is a bishop or archbishop, or I don't care if it is a company chairperson of a corporation or a president of the corporation or the organization or the country. I am. We are going to pray because the blueprint is there. The model is there. This Daniel who was a custodian, a custodian to make sure that the people of the Lord will not perish. The people of the Lord, the people that carry the blueprints of God cannot be destroyed in times of chaos. This Daniel counseled the king so that the king in his government, the king in his throne and around his throne, he must now be surrounded by the righteous. So Daniel presented the righteous ones like Shadrach, like Mishak, like Abednego. Daniel was not content to sit in the chair of the gate and of government alone. You see, there is this thing that we must correct in the old version of Christianity and Christians. We must correct and we must, and I hereby bring a strong rebuke to the system that we were finding, a system whereby believers, when doors open, when opportunities open, they do not know how to tap into those opportunities for the sake of the collective, for the sake of the kingdom. I am rebuking the principality and the stronghold of selfishness. Daniel is not content to go into this gentle government and then sit there as an exclusive beneficiary. No, he is not going in there, you know, as a, a, a lucky guy who has found a lucky streak and so his own breakthrough has happened. But Daniel is thinking, he is mindful that he's a custodian, not just a custodian of his own pocket, not just a custodian of his own purse, but a custodian of the destiny of God's people in their totality. So he remembers that two are better than one. He remembers that a threefold cord cannot be broken. I am rebuking and I am breaking down and dismantling selfish Christianity, Christianity that cannot oversee nations, Christianity that cannot be stewards over a nation. You know, brethren, there are some scriptures that are in the Bible that cannot work, they cannot operate until we repent. The scriptures like Psalms chapter 2, verse 8, which says, ask of me and I'll give you nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Now, how does that scripture apply in the through the church, which is in its current form, which is so divided, so selfish, so denominational, so inward looking? So if God has to release any nation, if he has to release Madagascar to the people that know God and the people that have prayed, I want to ask you, you know, I don't want to see chaos whereby 
denominations start tumbling and trading and pulling down one after the other because they want to put this one wants to put his denomination this one wants to no th this is the thing that has kept god's people grounded non essential and hopeless because we have not built the environment and the infrastructure and the mindset that can become custodians of our nations have when are we going to start producing chairpersons of state-owned corporations, chairpersons of airlines, entrepreneurs that can invest in order to produce an economy for the public good, in, you know, an economy to lower down the price of energy and fuel, an economy to create you know, access to internet and Wi-Fi and, and the appropriate technology to every person so that every person can be able to sit with dignity under their own fig tree and under their own vine and nobody making anybody a slave because there is a broad access, there is inclusion, there is a, a, you know, kingdom order, there is righteousness, there is the re replication and the replica of the blueprints of God, and there is joy in every place. In the days of Solomon, Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 4, on verse 20, the Bible says, Israel were, were numerous, they were multiplying in number, and they were eating and drinking, and every person was peaceful in their place. When are we going to stop the, the denominationalism and the denominational race and begin to focus on the major issues and priorities, such as to produce peace builders? Ladies and gentlemen, does it not provoke us and does it not prick our hearts to discover that it's now something like the second month and a, a third world war is forming up in our eyes and the whole church in the whole world, including the church in Europe, it has been completely grounded, crippled, uh, including in Russia, there is church, including in Ukraine, there is church, but not even one headline of newspapers to tell us that some kind of a Daniel has stood before President Putin or stood before President Zelensky and begin to tell them that righteousness exalts a nation and the sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, is this not you know, really an indictment on the quality of the church that we have been having? Now you see how much we need to repent. Now you see how much we need to reconstruct what we have been calling church, what we have been calling you know, the, 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 the work of God and the ministry. Because Isaiah 58 puts things and lays the card bare very clean on the table from verse 6 up to 12 to say, this is the fast that I have chosen that you may break the bands of wickedness, break the yoke and so forth. We must stop some of the nonsensical conflicts and wars. We must be pricked and convicted in our hearts and bring counsel. So Daniel stood before this king. He did not wait for 10 years until he has finished eating and filling up his own gravy train. No, Daniel, soon after he's appointed, he is bringing counsel righteous counsel to the king who is a gentile king who does not have a bible but this Daniel is coming. He is a custodian of righteousness. He is standing before this king. He's advising this king to say, you know what? Your throne will not prosper if you are surrounded by corrupt people. And I know upright people. I know righteous people because righteousness, you know, exalts a nation. Daniel is not selfish. He knows that this thing has got to be corporate. He looks for others. He calls for others. And he wants others to be near him. This is the kind of a thing, this is the kind of a spirit that God is putting upon us. And this is the spirit that will make us custodians of nations. I am tired of seeing children of God who God opens mighty doors 
awesome doors for them. And until they collapse and crumble and fall again after 30 years, they have delivered nobody. They have empowered nobody. They have lifted up nobody. They did nothing for anybody except their own. They satisfied their ego and their corruption. These are things that we must turn from our wicked ways and seek the face of God. We see and we learn from Daniel. It's the same lesson that we learn from uh, the man of God, Joseph. When doors have opened for him, he meets these people, these brothers that previously they had mistreated him. He says to them, you know, you are forgiven because you did not know what you were doing. Now I am taking you. I'm bringing you to Pharaoh. I'm introducing you. I am not enough if I am alone in Egypt here because when I die, there shall arise another king who does not know Joseph. But at least there must be a generation that will have survived. There must be a people that know their God. They must be able to carry on with this vision. They must be able to carry on with this mandate. So Joseph is not content to be an isolationist uh, who is you know enjoying the gravy train alone there but he takes the 70 souls he takes you know the, the five the other five brothers plus his father representing all the 12 he presents them before pharaoh and he facilitates that they must now go into the best part of the land and when they are in the best part of the land it shall go well with the, the nations it shall go well with the kingdom agenda exactly a kingdom mindset. This is the kingdom mindset that Mordecai counseled Esther as Esther was sitting in that palace, enjoying again the gravy train and ignorant and oblivious of why God has brought her there. This is the counsel that turned Esther from being an individual, uh, you know, in a fashion oriented queen to become a true mother of the kingdom and mother of nations. Up to this day, the Jews that are in the country of Iran, the former kingdom of Persia, up to this day, they do have on the calendar the holiday, there is celebration of Purim, which was ordained in honor of the custodianship of Esther and of Mordecai. It's remembered even in mainland Israel today for all generations. These are the models that we want to see coming into the house of God. May God help us tonight. I am immediately turning over the session. I'm turning over the session in a moment right now to our sister, Nomsa Yehuda, a national prayer leader from the country of Zimbabwe, and she's going to take us through in order to finish the, 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 the remaining, you know, remaining segment. And, and God richly bless you. And tomorrow morning, we are connecting five o'clock in the morning, and we are moving forward. Over to you, woman of God. God richly bless you. The, 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 the game must change and the future will be totally different because there is more than enough to prosper everybody under the sun, provided we change the system and we provided, uh, you know, provided we put the accurate system where it is supposed to be, then the future is guaranteed. We cannot continue in the old system and in the old robberies and in the old selfishness, this cannot take God's people to from generation to generation. And this will not deliver the future of this world. Over to you, woman of God, uh, our sister Nomsa. God bless you. Amen. Um, thank you, Apostle. And thank you for a tremendous um, sharing this evening as in other evenings. Um, and good evening, um, beloved, Shabbat Shalom uh, to all of you. And um, just very briefly, um, today is a, a new moon gate. You know, we've moved from the month of Nisan and uh, we have moved into the month of Iyar, the second month according to the sacred biblical calendar. And it, this all happens on the ninth day of our 70-day journey.
that God has set us apart for. And the word of God clearly says in Psalm 104, 19, the moon marks out seasons and the sun knows it's going down. As a prophetic people, we must discern the prophetic seasons of God. And again, um, in Psalm 89, 37, the Bible does say, oh moon, you're a faithful witness in the sky. In this very prophetic gate and taking into account what Apostle has been sharing tonight, we just say, according to Psalm 19, 1 to 4, may the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. May they declare the glory of the Lord over World Economic Congress at Kiam. We also say tonight, let's release intercessors, let's release the voice of the Lord over the nations and over their domains. May the gates of bronze and the bars of iron be broken. May his voice not spare anyone, as Apostle was sharing tonight. That voice must be released. We write it into this gate that the voice of the Lord shall be upon many waters. The God of glory will thunder. The Lord will be upon many waters. The voice of the Lord will shake the, 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 the cedars of Lebanon. It shall shake barrenness. We also continue, um, as he has been sharing tonight, that may God's chosen system emerge. We need to pray that the points I'm putting really are in themselves. Prayer point, may God's chosen system emerge in these 70 days. May the prophetic foundations of nations be laid. As the prophetic foundations of nations are laid, then God's chosen systems will emerge. You know, it was said, I think he shared earlier on that Jacob comes as a family, just a family of 60, of 70 persons, and it ends up as a nation. It ends up as a nation. Being the ninth day of our journey, may the midwives take their prophetic positions. Midwives with a job to do, with a job. When we look back in the word of God, those midwives preserved God's purposes. We have a, a responsibility before God to pray for, for, this, for our visionary. We need to pray for our visionary. Uh, Pastor Apostle Chisango and Pastor Mom Florence, we need to pray for the preservation of this man. We need to pray because the, the prophetic uh, scrolls that are being released. The enemy is not happy. So we need to pray as midwives. We, we are there positioned to ensure, they are positioned to ensure that the male children did not die. We need to pray that today. But we also need to pray that the God's prophetic purpose, process, that there'll be a massive release a massive breakthroughs that eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it occurred to the heart of man what God has prepared for us who fear his name. You see, the number 70, when we look at it, it's a number, um, even in God's word, we also see it, uh, yes, it speaks of uh, prophetically of, of those foundations, but a lot of the time is. It comes just before this a, a breakthrough or, or, or of increase. It, it, it starts with 70 persons. At the end of it, there's, um, it's, it's about 2 million. Therefore, in these 70 days and in this prophetic gate, we must pray for a release of such multiplication of the numbers that will grow in World Economic Congress. And, and it, as the word is being, multitudes must, upon multitudes must come and be a part of what God is doing in, in this day. Then I'm going further. Uh, <clears throat> looking at our time on the other points that the apostles specifically um, raised today, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We must um, bring repentance tonight. He spoke about the state of the church 
the state of the nations, unrighteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Therefore, we must come in a spirit of repentance. You know, those were just declarations, um, but we must come in a spirit of, of repentance and so that God will have mercy on us and reposition us and uh, expose sin and repos we need to position, reposition ourselves into a new system of God. We also need to pray that during this time, you know, the um, the custodian, uh, the uh, custodians of God, uh, the, of the destinies of nations, are uh, not people that uh, give up because there's um, trouble or trial, but we go over like Noah. We go over uh, every trial, and you know, the same uh, uh, floods that destroyed the world will cause our ark to float. And therefore, we must pray, Daniel 11, 32, as was shared tonight, that the people who know their God will be strong and do exploit. Let's pray for this seed of strength to be planted in us as we face the world in crisis that doesn't know what to do. Let's also pray Romans 8, 19. Creation is indeed groaning. Creation is in labor, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Ah, intercessors, uh, uh, the spiritual midwives, let's, let's, as the uh, creation is groaning, let's be there to receive what God is birthing as the sons of God emerged. Yes, in this uh, time when nations are um, lack direction, God will raise us up. And um, thank you, Lord Jesus. I um, yes, He also spoke about the voice of God coming before kings. Let's pray that voice. We can be used by God. Let's not limit ourselves. Let's not look down on ourselves. Let inferiority be shaken from us. God can use us before mightily, before kings. So let's go into prayer. First, making declarations into this new moon gate. Um, it, it's a prophetic gate in itself. Um, but, but, and then secondly, just coming in that spirit of repentance that God, uh, that God would have mercy on us. Thank you, beloved. Uh, sorry, let's just pray. Um, and I took a bit of time, but let's just pray. In so, uh, Proverbs 25, 8, take away the wicked before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Let's pray for that righteousness. Let's pray that we ourselves as custodians of the destinies of nations will be a righteous people. Thank you. Let's all un un unmute ourselves and pray. So, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, it is your heart. Father, at this gate, Father, we come and stand. We come and stand in place of the students. We come to the spirit of the students. We come to the spirit of the students. We Thank you. 
Um, we are thankful to God uh, tonight. We are thankful so much to God for, for his salvation, uh, for his uh, faithfulness. I have urged, and I want to urge us once again, um, because this is a, you know, it's not one of those uh, old time revival meetings and so forth, uh, where we will be there and we get preached to, we get spoken to, then we cry, then we go home, then we wait for another similar uh, occurrence next time. Uh, but this is a, a, a platform also and a door and a portal for uh, engagement. So there's going to be a lot of interaction. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, exchange and there's going to be a lot of engagement. Uh, so that is why two days ago, I shared the template of our program as it will be scaling up uh, to the uh, intent and the extent that we will be able to, uh, to have immediate uh, engagements uh, during these sessions within that same one hour. Um, uh, very soon, the, 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 the heavy load uh, of the preliminary and initial word of God, once it is downloaded and poured out, um, we are moving soon into the phase of practical issues, uh, practical practicalities and practical um, reconstruction. Uh, so we will be uh, bringing in and uh, receiving and hosting many. Uh, others may not be coming to testify of what they are building, but they will be coming uh, in the form of Macedonian callers who are coming to say, come over here and help us also 
and, we, and as custodians, uh, God will be enabling us from time to time. And some of you, you are already experiencing this uh, phenomenon and uh, situation in your area, uh, in your locality or in your city or in your country. Um, and please do it on our behalf. Do it on behalf of uh, the Christ. Do it on behalf of the kingdom of God. Do it on behalf of the body of Christ as a whole. Uh, God bless you. His mercies, his grace uh, must be and will be upon you. Uh, we love to hear the testimonies. We want to post the testimonies uh, as God is moving. Let it become Acts chapter 29. Let it become the book of Acts chapter 29 going forward. The death of testimonies must be, uh, must be ended and uh, uh, we need a resurrection of, of what God is doing. So there will be um, a continuous reshaping of the program as, as we curve in towards more and more combinations of the fullness of uh, Second Chronicles 7, 14 in a way which also you can collapse into Isaiah 58 uh, verses 6 to 12. We'll be combining all those facets and all those aspects uh, together. And may God richly bless us um, uh, as we uh, prepare to finish laying this foundation. Uh, then we get going. Uh, thank you so much. Many of you that are on the platform, uh, you will input, you will participate, you will contribute because you came into the kingdom also for such a time as this. I am not sure whether tonight there is also those that might have visit, you know, joined for the first time. Uh, we don't call them visitors unless they want to be called visitors. Uh, we just call them uh, fellow soldiers, uh, uh, hopefully. If they are there, please introduce them. Or if uh, one came by yourself, just introduce yourself. Uh, sometimes because of technology, we might not know who is using which gadget and whatever. But if you are there to introduce somebody or to introduce yourself, please kindly uh, go ahead and do so. It's your time before we log off. God bless you.